Our cast of lunatic peasants. Rye. Pyromaniac rogue who has managed to take out a bounty on himself. J. Standard fighter who's as close to a straight man as the group has. Pete. Apprentice to the traveling wizard who's responsible for the enchanted weapons. Also cursed to be blind when not at full hit points. Greg. New recruit and wannabe adventurer who has saved the party once and almost died twice in a single adventure and loved every second of it. And finally, Owen, the ex-paladin, now fallen paladin and champion of an eldritch cult dedicated to killing Pete. As a reminder of the mechanics, each party member is equipped with enchanted weapons which do one of the 20,000 random effects on each attack. Can choose to reroll the effects or maintain the same one if they get a good one, if you'd like a refresher. Part 2 is here, and links to part 1. When we last left off, party had completed a handful of basic bounties and barely survived their first legitimate adventure. Probably all have PTSD, post-traumatic spider disorder. Except Greg, who turned out to be a huge daredevil and saved the party's ass. Party had paid off a few hundred gold of their bounty. Unfortunately they managed to rack up even more criminal charges in that time and are basically back at square one. Decide the only solution to this problem is to take on even more well paying and dangerous bounties. Committing less crimes is obviously out of the question. See a bounty to investigate a strange group that's taken over a mine near royal city of Gildedville. Armed and hostile, have killed some miners and guards. Gildedville is a few days northeast of Onain. So the party supplies up and heads out. Quest get. Meanwhile, in our own story, nothing. Couldn't actually make it to this session, unfortunately. Insert whatever generic evil things you want here I guess. Didn't matter anyway since party ended up hugely sidetracked as usual. Meanwhile, in the main party's adventure. Botch a perception roll, what a surprise, and end up stumbling across a bandit camp. GM describes how two bandits are chilling by a fire pit, counting coins, with what seems to be the leader off in the corner doing something, pissing on a tree or whatever. Party is way too into this guy pissing on a tree, demands more detail. Are his pants all the way down was a question that was asked. Party spends half of a fucking hour trying to think of ways to fuck with this guy pissing in the fucking woods. Finally GM gets annoyed and just says the bandits spot them for being retarded and crouching in a bush for half an hour. Activating combat mode .jrpg. Fight itself is pretty straightforward. Mostly just a warm up since it's been a year. No one told the 20,000 random effects that, though. Greg draws first blood. Bandit staggers back with a slash across his chest. Laughing. You fool my blood is the secret to immortality. Observe. Cups some of his blood in his hands and drinks it. Falls over dead. Greg turns to GM. I drink the blood. Party facipums. Thankfully Greg rolls high and doesn't get horribly ill. Jay attacks a bandit. Costa now has acidic blood which dissolves any weapon which cuffs him. Bandit attacks Jay. Saw turns into puddle of goo. What kind of fucked up mages are these people? Greg attacks. A castle made of ice appears near the party. A quite literally earth shattering crack echoes through the woods and nearly knocks everyone off their feet. Trees and boulders are flying through the air in a giant explosion of foliage. An absolutely enormous ice castle has burst out of the ground like mother earth got face fucked by a thematically appropriate xenomorph. Big enough that it's clearly visible through the tree line despite being hours away. Bandits and PCS are absolutely mystified and unable to fight. Jay tears himself away, has bizarrely high willpower for some reason. Attacks a bandit. D20,000 random effect. Next missile attack fired by the caster restores its target to full health. Thankfully, Jay carries a ratty old unenchanted flintlock pistol around. GM describes an unknown surge of energy flowing from Jay's sword and coming to reside in his pistol. It thrums with dull warmth at his hip. Pete is also able to tear his focus away from the castle. Shoots a bandit. D20,000. Costa believes himself to be the victim of an indescribably horrible curse. Pete is absolutely certain that he has just been hit by every curse he knows and about three that he doesn't. Decides fuck the enchanted weapons. Blasts the last bandit with lightning while doing an Emperor Palpatine impression out of character. Party of course decides fuck the actual quest. It's ice castle time. Heads back into town for more supplies first. In town. 
Finds there's already a bounty for information on the ice palace. Damn. These guys work fast. Grab some supplies as Pete goes to see his master. Master explains Pete isn't cursed. Other than the whole blindness thing. Which he can't lift. Pete's super not buying it. He must be cursed to make people think he's not cursed. That's a thing. Right. Master teaches Pete a reasonably spammable healing cantrip to help deal with the blindness. Should at least stop him from going blind every time he gets a mosquito bite or something stupid like that. Cautions him that the castle is likely from another plane. No way of knowing what's inside. Party grabs bounty. Heads to castle. Quest get. Party treks through woods and arrives at ice palace. Holy shit it's literally an ice palace. Bricks are ice. Drawbridge is ice. Chains on drawbridge are ice. Ice braziers with sculpted ice flames. Ice place you've got here. Castle itself is sitting in the middle of a giant crevice in the ground. Unable to see the bottom. Players see trails of frost leaving the open drawbridge of the castle. Going out into the woods. Trees. Animals. Even bandits in combat poses all frozen solid around the entrance. Damn. These guys work fast too. Are we really just that slow GM? Don't answer that. Greg's eyes light up. I smash the frozen corpses and loot what falls out. What? Party suggests that this isn't a video game. But GM silences them. This is a teaching moment. Greg tries to smash one of the corpses. GM describes an excessive detail as his sword buries into the chest of a bandit Seattler. Cracking through the ice and sealing itself into leathery, desiccated flesh beneath. Has to make strength rolls to pull it out while party laughs. With that tomfuckery over. Party heads into the castle proper. Come into a massive main hall. All ice save for a red carpet rolling down the center of the room. Long, narrow room. Ceiling dozens of meters tall. At the far end of the room is two staircases along the left and right wall with a landing between them. Three statues of knights line each left and right wall. Each of them towering at 5 meters tall. Frozen corpses of bandits kneel in circles or recoil in terror around them. As soon as GM mentions statues, entire party looks at him like he's driving a white van with free candy written on the side. All except Jay. Jay is super into those statues. They have really nice swords. Really. Nii ni ice. Party screams at him as he reaches for one. Except Raya who is egging him on while standing as far away as possible. Manages to pass a willpower check with their help and pull away thanks to his absurdly high willpower. Damn. Party keeps to the middle, away from the statues, until finally reaching the staircases and climbing up. See two doors, each also made of ice, two meters tall and featureless. Between the two doors is a final statue, even bigger and more grandiose than the rest. Doors marked as path of might and path of wit. As party is debating how to open doors, one of them wanders too close to statue and it steps off of its plinth. What a twist. Gives them an icy glare before kneeling down and laying its outstretched hand on the ground before them. What an actual twist. Two words boom through the auditorium. Be judged. Party squabbles about what to do for a while. Rai wants to cut open Jay and rub him on the door to melt through. Someone else points out it could take a while. Rai suggests slitting Jay's throat open to get more blood out and melt faster. Jay helpfully points out they'll be able to get more of his blood and for longer if they don't kill him right now. Rai ignores him. Finally, Greg steps forward and puts his magical sword in the statue's hand. Because they're both magical. Right. Statue immediately hurls the sword across the hall. Where it embeds itself by the entrance. Be judged. Greg figures fuck it and steps into the statue's hand. Lifts him up to its full 6 meter height with its giant great sword pointed at Greg's chest. After a few long moments. Loudly declares worthless and casually chucks him over its shoulder down the stairs. Careless almost death counter goes up by one. Jay steps forward next. Statue judges him, decrees villainous and stabs him through the chest. However, his blood melts the sword as it enters him. He's left with only a gaping chest wound, but technically not dead. Melts his way out of the statue's grip. Statue arms itself with its shield and moves to attack the group. Rai spends 10 minutes debating whether or not, in an unarmed attack, the statue would count as the weapon and so disintegrate itself. 
eventually rule it would not by virtue of not being a cutting weapon and also op. Rai rolls highest for initiative, shoots the statue. The echoing crack of his gunpowder firing is joined by hundreds, thousands more. Sound almost faded, or ghostly. The souls of the departed reenact an ancient battle on this spot forever. A phantom legion of human soldiers clashes with a battalion of elves in beautiful golden armor. Dozens of weapons firing every second. Clashes of steel sound like thunder. Ghostly warriors are cut down, only to climb back to their feet seconds later and rejoin the fray. The statue is going absolutely ballistic, frantically trying to judge all these new souls. Rolls a d6 each turn, can only act on a 5 or a 6, otherwise is too busy slap fighting ghosts. Rai turns to Jay, rub your fucking nipples on the door. Jay helplessly turns to Pete for help. Pete shrugs. Jay groans. Starts rubbing his nips on the door, valiantly risking frostbite to melt a hole in it. Rest of party wails on the statue while it's distracted. Tough son of a bitch is taking a hell of a beating. Greg runs up the stairs, forgets he doesn't have a sword anymore. Runs back down to the entrance of the main hall and spends the rest of the fight trying and failing to pull it out of the wall. Pete shoots the statue. Rolls the effect caster will fall down the next set of stairs he encounters. Pete is standing on stairs. Pete is blasted backwards, tumbling head over heels down the stairs. Rolls well, but takes exactly 4 damage. Blind. Rai shoots at the statue. His eyes immediately sink 3 inches back into his skull, giving him permanent tunnel vision and a minus 3 perception penalty. Loses points in basically the most important stat for a ranged character, which he is. But at least the statue is almost destroyed. Jay decides to take a break from the world's most intense purple nurple and see what the effect he charged his pistol with was. Shoots statue. Statue is now back at full health. Rai looks like he's trying to decide whether his next shot should be for the statue or Jay. Greg is still doing his best King Arthur impression. It's not a very good one. Pete climbs to his feet, heals himself with the cantrip, and rushes back to the top of the stairs. Rai decides fuck it, he is going in for a melee attack. Attacks with his enchanted dagger. GM tells him he notices no effect while trying and failing to hold back laughter. Statue finally rolls high enough to act. Bitch slaps Rai back a few meters and takes off half his health, leaving him with 23 remaining. Jay swirls his chest on the door in an even more panicked motion. Greg finally rolls high enough to pull out his sword. Pete shoots the statue, and a massive column of green light now follows it wherever it goes. Party is afraid to attack it now, but Rai eventually decides fuck it, pulls out his pistol to attack. GM laughs. Would you say you're wielding your pistol? Rise effect, Caster attacks himself with the next weapon he wields for 1d10 rounds. Rai pulls out his pistol and immediately shoots himself in the chest with it, dealing exactly 23 damage and leaving him bleeding out on the floor. Greg runs over to help Rai as Pete hurls spells at the statue. Finally, Jay melts through the door just as the statue crumbles from Pete's assault. Greg helps up Rai, who thankfully rolled low enough that he didn't just shoot himself again. GM quietly mourns that Jay didn't try to be a hero by shooting Rai and killing him. Jay stabs the party and then shoots them all, healing them to full health. That's a sentence I didn't think I'd ever write about a tabletop role playing game. Greg grabs the magic elemental ice heart of the statue before the party presses onwards. Comes to a throne room, with frozen corpses of supplicants surrounding a throne that dwarfs even the statues. Rai mishears description, only makes out dwarf. Spends next hour making jokes about this secretly being Peter Dinklage's castle, where he builds giant statues and sits on giant thrones. Rai climbs onto the throne with help from the party. A spooky psychic voice taunts him for sitting on the throne and challenges him to come further into the castle. Laughs evilly in his head as it fades away. Rai laughs back. Party has known him long enough to not react when he bursts out into maniacal laughter seemingly unprovoked. Head through a hallway obvious meant for someone 10x their size, compared to the relatively cramped one they'd just come through. Head onto giant elevator platform and down, down, down. Do you get the point? Finally, come to the biggest room yet. Enormous square room with a luxurious red carpet, two rows of symmetric pillars running alongside either side of it. 
Another giant throne sits at the far end, and on top of the throne is... Is Peter Dinklage. No, Rye, is an enormous man with blue skin and long, white hair. He's dressed in Nordic fur armor and has a beard that nearly reaches his waist. He carries a great sword nearly the size of him, and a glittering crown of frost rests upon his head. All in all, he's the first thing not made of ice you've seen in the entire castle. Other than the carpets you mean. Yes Rai. Other than the carpets. And his armor. Yes and his armor. And his sword. GM considers a rock's fall but decides to just monologue instead. Frost King goes on about how he doesn't know how people so small and pathetic made it in here. Although by the sounds of it it was and still is quite a battle. Greg leaps forward and challenges the king. The fuck is wrong with the crazy ass farmer? King laughs and accepts before attacking the party. Party charges and after Greg. Feeling pretty cocky thanks to Jay's acid blood and healing abilities. Greg rolls highest on his initiative. Runs up and attacks the king. D20,000 random effect. All metal within 50 meters is now indestructible until sunset tomorrow. Fuck. Well there goes the acid blood. Q long and arduous boss fight. Party is basically being held together with Jay's healing and hope. King is cleaving off halves of their HP each blow. Jay is flipping between attacking the king and his own party members like a bipolar whirlwind. Rai shoots, turning his blood to mercury instantly. GM decides not to kill him because that's pretty bullshitty. Just has mercury blood now. Careful not to bleed on any teammates I guess. Pete shoots, instantly filled with crippling self-doubt about his capacity as a mage. Is he a disappointment to his master he's a fraud? He probably deserved that curse, since he couldn't even figure out what it was. Pete now has to make a willpower roll every time he casts a spell, or it just fizzles and he has a crisis of worth. Greg complains about shitty rolls, attacks the king, target petrifies completely in 1d10 turns. This Mithurfica. Gone on two adventures and both times he rolled an effect that saved the party's ass. Hasn't nearly died yet, but just wait for it. King will now die in 6 rounds. Party just needs to survive. Rai shoots. All torches he's carrying turn to magnesium and ignite. Rai had cut an entire tree into giant logs and filled a bag with them. Figured he could just lick them and carry it around whenever the party needed light. This Mithurfica has an entire tree's worth of flaming magnesium in a bag. Table turns to Pete, who's the most versed in chemistry in real life. Asks how big boom, well, it depends on how much moisture is in the air. Table reminds Pete they're in a fucking castle made of ice. Oh, we should probably run, then. Rai throws bag at King as party dives behind the closest pillar they can find. Gigantic explosion rips through castle and nearly sends the king crashing through the crater where the floor used to be. Rai just witnessed metal get set on fire and explode. This is the single greatest day of his entire life. Pete attacks. Everything within 50 meters appears to radiate evil. Castle is evil. King is evil. Weapons from his master are evil. Party members are evil. Enough evil to make a paladin's holy head explode. Pete is chaotic good at the best of times but even this is too much evil for him. Something small and irreplaceable inside Pete's head shatters. Pete tries to cast a spell at the party in a panic but fails his roll. No one notices it fizzles, so he just starts running away. Greg attacks. Costa wakes up early in the morning and returns to this spot. GM quietly begins drawing maps of the half-melted ice palace. Rai sees the king closing in on him. No more wood, but Rai just found a pistol that sets metal on fire. Raikkonen will die to keep this effect. Party is screaming at him to change it and do something. Think of all the fires you haven't seen and or set yet. Rai is no longer willing to die for this. Sheds a single tear and re-rolls. All the rope in the caster's possession doubles in length. Rai isn't carrying any rope, but he is carrying all the camping equipment. Probably rope in there. Rai's pack bulges comically, the sudden weight pulling him away from the king's blow. Pete decides to play the long con for now. Keeps fighting king. Shoots, rolls effect. Suddenly eggs. Fucking tidal wave of eggs. Rolled effect targets house fills with eggs. Party is underground in a giant castle that is flooding with eggs. GM throws away his map of the half melted palace. Giant wall of eggs is rushing towards the party from far end of the chamber. 
Entire party and the boss begin rushing for the exit. All except Greg. Greg has a couple points in persuasion and way more confidence in himself than he deserves. Realizes if the king gets buried in eggs, he won't be able to loot his corpse. Decides to talk the king into leaving with them. Party points out he's already doing that. Greg insists. Rolls terribly, but GM decides to let him try again if he tries to persuade the king into doing something he's not already doing. I'm going to persuade him to give me all his stuff before he dies. Sure you are. Greg rolls. Crit fails. King becomes enraged and cuts him down in a single blow. Ryan and Pete have already eggs caped. Only Jay is left. The eggs are closing in. GM is rolling to see how far the eggs move per turn Greg is one botched roll away from death. GM solemnly hands Greg the d6 as the table falls silent. Anything above a 3 and he's dead. This lucky Mathurfica rolls a 3. Jay shoots him. Healing him to full. And the two of them make it to the elevator just as the boss starts it up. Engage in the longest, most awkward elevator ride of their lives as the king stares mournfully at his petrifying body and egg flooding castle. Truly, this is magic most foul. By the time they reach the top, enough time has passed that the king takes a single step and turns to stone. Party loots his crown and sword. Crown is cursed off but no one puts it on. Yet. Sword is gilded and covered in precious gems. Short to fetch an exorbitant price. Eggs begin pelting the party's backs as the wave catches up to them. Book it through the main hall, past the ghosts and the statues trying to block off the eggs. Dive off the drawbridge as the castle vomits eggs behind them. Finally safe, the party spends a long, long while just laying exhausted on the grass, contemplating how absolutely fucking ridiculous everything that just happened was. But at least they escaped. Okay I'll stop now.